I'm Martha Russell, Executive Director of Media X at Stanford University. I'm very happy to welcome you here today. We have an exciting day, a very full day. And right at the top of the day, I want to apologize to our fabulous speakers for the short amount of time that I have given everyone to talk. There is so much that we want to cover today. And typical of Media X, we try to create a broad arc and approach a topic from many different directions, an interdisciplinary collection of ideas. And to do that in a topic as complex as workforce and learning pathways in a period of dynamic change, we're going to take, uh, I'm going to call them brain snacks through the day, uh, ideas that will be shared by our presenters to create a, a horizon that will give us indications of things that are coming. We know that workforce and learning are changing. Big changes are coming. Come on down uh, to the front. There are lots of seats down here. And um, my Apologies, it's the university's rule that the seats have to be locked together when we have this many people in a room. But, you know, give yourself um, some elbow room if you feel that you'd like to have it. <clears throat> now, these changes that are coming are broader than just the jobs we do or what we learn. They affect, in fact, how organizations are coming together and organizing the way that work gets done in the way that products and services are delivered, and actually where the center of gravity of work will be. At the same time, things are getting smaller, and yet they're getting larger, becoming more global. So in this context, we are looking at environments in which, oops, sorry, uh, environments in which uh, teams of people working together in the hackathon is becoming an accepted mode of teaching and learning. We're looking at partnerships of human and artificial intelligence in which the interdependence of one on the other uh, becomes critical and the roles of who's leading, who's following, uh, a change uh, continuously over a period of time. This particular picture is of a group in Hong Kong that in April of this year, the control systems in the air towers went out. And so the, the people who were monitoring the air traffic control had to suddenly shift to their understanding of the system as a whole and their ability to draw on their individual intelligence and their ability to work together as team members. But increasingly, these automated systems are becoming team members for individuals in today's environment. We have new uh, kind of employer that has been termed the pop-up employer. Organizations that with crowdsourcing, tapping crowds of workers, can uh, identify a project, build a team, do the work, and then say goodbye. Pop-up employers. We have uh, a need for people to be able to come together quickly, build teams, reconfigure themselves, find the collaboration that they need in order to work together, and <clears throat> do this continually uh, through the day and over the years. At the same time, the youth, and this is a picture of youth in Hong Kong, in which a recent survey showed that almost half of the young people in Hong Kong, if they could, would like to leave. They don't know what they're going to do. They don't know what their future is going to be. And so how does a young person, or a middle-aged person, or an older person, Reskill in an environment in which the jobs of the future really are not yet defined. Some of the research that has been done here at Stanford, and particularly research done by Byron Reeves, has been studying multitasking. And they've identified a really critical element 
that pertains to work, it pertains to learning. And that is the importance in this multitasking environment of the pause button. Okay, unpause me. <laughs> and let me give you a little background on uh, MediaX. Um, here in Silicon Valley, where innovation is expected, and at Stanford University, where excellence is a threshold, MediaX follows this DNA and is a catalyst for um, innovations, uh, for questions uh, about people and technology together. And we follow this, uh, uh, this Silicon Valley mindset of rapid iteration on questions that are at the intersection, exchanging um, ideas and insights with our member organizations along the way. It, as a catalyst, we are an opportunity for organizations to essentially uh, check the horizon through the lens of the future by tapping the, and leveraging Stanford's strengths. So we tap the thought leaders, articulate various new domains and calibrate how the lens, how will we look at this? What kind of questions will we ask? Understand the challenges and opportunities and uh, iterate on concept proofs and iteration. As uh, a member organization, I want to, especially today, thank the members of MediaX and the Monty Tool Family Foundation for the resources to allow us to have this conference today and to uh, invite you to come at no registration fee. How do you like that? Okay. <laughs> so uh, as you uh, see these names of our member companies and as you uh, are talking with people in the break, if you are shaking hands with someone from our member organization, please say thank you. And if you are not a member organization, uh, ask them about membership, if they have benefits from that, and we do invite new members, so um, thank you very much for that. MediaX is in the, is the uh, industry affiliate program of the Human Sciences and Technology Advanced Research Institute in the Graduate School of Education here at Stanford University. And our focus is on building relationships across the university and from the university out to the community uh, with mutual respect for the strengths of the other and synergistic inspiration for new questions and new results. We are keenly focused on using technology to improve the human experience. And in our discovery collaborations, uh, offer to our member organizations additional context for strategic decisions that they are making. We're a virtual organization and work with laboratories across the entire campus. Everywhere where the researchers are interested in the intersection of people and information technologies. Some of the themes that we are currently working on include these. Uh, measuring and improving the productivity of knowledge workers, smart tools for creativity and collaboration, human machine interfaces, ambient connected environments, augmented problem solving, innovation ecosystems, a future context for smart mobile devices, and a new one that we're launching next week on potential performance and productivity. So today is the first of three important fall conferences that MediaX is holding. Um, I will tell you now that the presentations, the videos of the presentations will be online following the conference. So relax and just, you know, let yourself um, absorb the information and uh, feel the connections between the topics. And it's with great pleasure that I introduce our faculty director of MediaX, uh, Professor Roy P. Thank you, Martha. Good morning, distinguished visitors, first-time visitors, also distinguished, no doubt. <laughs> Glad to have you all with us today. It's a gorgeous California day. And I'd like to open us with a framing question. What is the role of technology in any of this 
For quite some time, I've written extensively about how, unlike the dominant perspective for decades, technology is not simply an amplifier of human capacities. That suggests a one-dimensionality that is untrue to the situation. Technology, in fact, reorganizes the very activity systems in which learning, conversation, work, and our representational practices are achieved. In other words, it's tinkering with the infrastructure of human activity. And because of that, we have to ask, in these partnerships, how can we enable and empower groups to do a better job in investigating and advancing these futures? What can we do together that none of us could do alone? William Gibson tells us we don't have to just look off into a distant telescope. We can look around us. The future is already here. It's just unevenly distributed. And so one thing we can ask is what's in the headlines? What do we see in the work floors? What do we see in society? And in this context, recent applications of AI, machine learning, data scientists have brought forth prospects of self-driving cars, pervasive computer vision, facial recognition, robust speech recognition as naturalistic means for humans to be interacting with computational devices as well now as machines learning by themselves about the natural and social worlds. This is a quote from a recent conference at NYU on the future of artificial intelligence. And Dar highlights how previously machines were unable to read, hear, or see. They had to have their information curated by humans. But newer systems take this visual, auditory, or language input directly. This enables the machine to take these inputs from the world without the humans and create their own internal representations for further processing. This is rather significant. <laughs> for some, it raises the questions about whether the algorithmization of work will eliminate many, many human jobs and the need for various things that we believed a system of education needed to prepare people for in the past. There have been a number of scholarly reports in the last few years where social scientists, labor economists, and educators foreground three kinds of tasks for which humans can be particularly well-suited in this emerging future. The first is solving unstructured problems that the machines may well be unable to find structure in. Second is working with new information that impinges on the situation. Third is carrying out non-routine manual tasks for which robots at least as yet, do not have the capabilities. The bulk of the rest of the work, these reports argued, will be done by computers with some work reserved for low-wage workers overseas. If I were a graduate student today, I would be wondering about these questions. Several Harvard professors tell us that the future success of the middle class rests on the nation's ability, and of course this applies to all nations, not only the United States, although this was a report directed to the United States, to sharply increase the fraction of children with the foundational skills needed to develop job-relevant knowledge and learn efficiently over a lifetime. These are the capabilities that Gregory Bateson years ago called Deutero learning, or learning how to learn. And what are the kinds of learning experiences that are needed to reconceptualize the learning and educational activities in these fast-changing environments? Who can coach and teach, and what's worth knowing? Alan Collins, one of our colleagues in the Cognitive Sciences of Education, will be joining us in late November, and we'll broadcast that broadly to talk about a new book that he has on what's worth teaching, examining these questions. Now, if I was a graduate student, I would ask what kinds of scholars will we need for the future of work? What fields might I go into to help make the necessary advances for this teamwork to figure out the future of work? Among the capabilities we need are philosophers who can tangle with the societal and educational implications of the very weighty issues of the intersections of mind, neuroscience, robotics, AI, and the future of learning. What does it mean to know what's the role of humans in the mix? 
We'll need computer scientists who specialize in machine learning and data sciences, but who can also make advances in adaptive personalized learning. We'll need labor economists who can bring research on the future of labor markets into collaborative contact with faculty and educators who develop new learning environment designs. Curricula will need to change. We'll need new forms of assessment, new teacher preparation programs, and to investigate their effectiveness. Especially important, I believe, is we need more anthropologists who can glean insights germane to educational futures by careful studies of what the emerging cultural practices are in this maelstrom of pervasive co-evolving human machine systems. What will we be finding? What will its implications be? Altogether, we can do what none of us can do alone, so let's join into this maelstrom today. Hopefully, each develops some new ideas, new networks, new collaborations. Thank you.